the gut bacteria has continuous cooperation with the immune system. So there's a, a symbiotic relationship between those bacteria and the gut associated lymphoid tissue and the intestinal mucosa. The gut associated lymphoid tissue, GALT, is the largest mass of lymphoid tissue in the body, consisted of immune cells such as B and T lymphocytes, microphage, and antigen presenting cells. This cooperation is essential for maintaining immune tolerance to commensal and food antigens while maintaining efficiency in eliminating potential harmful factors. The gut bacteria has an important role in creating the intestinal barrier, which is a physical and a functional structure with selective permeability to molecules of certain size and molecular charge. And if there's a failure of the intestinal barrier, then what will happen is there's going to be a migration of antigens through the tight junctions in between the cells. And those inflammatory, pro-inflammatory cells or antigens are going to go in between the cells into the blood vessels where they're going to be distributed in our body, leading to subclinical and persistent inflammation. An association was found between abundance of selected type of bacteria and the antibodies against thyroid peroxide and thyroglobulin. I'm going to talk a little bit about gluten as well, but there is a study that showed that with celiac patients, gluten sensitivity and healthy individuals, when they eat gluten, there is a secretion of zonulin, which also opens up the tight junctions and allow the same very similar mechanism to occur, which is the migration of antigen pro-inflammatory cell, sometimes even bacteria into the portal vein, where it started to create increased the systemic or associated with systemic inflammation. Other studies suggest the association between certain bacteria, such as Helicobacter pylori and thyroid antibodies. After administration of antibiotic for H. pylori, levels of anti-TPO and anti-TG uh, antibodies titers significantly decrease. So it's just showing you how essentially some of those bacteria can irritate the integrity of that uh, barrier, intestinal barrier, and stimulate systemic inflammation. Normal gastric pH is needed for effective absorption of thyroxine. So patients with impaired gastric acid secretion require higher dose of thyroid hormone treatment. That's if they're on PPIs, proton pump inhibitors, or taking TOMS, uh, or are just stressed and they're activating their sympathetic system and have a decrease in secretion of hydrochloric acid. And then gut bacteria also affect endogenous and exogenous thyroid hormones. There's several mechanisms to that. For example, it affects the enterohepatic cycling of thyroid hormones, which is basically referred to the circulation of the biliary acid, bilirubin drugs, and other substances such as hormones from the liver to the bile to the intestine, where they are eventually being eliminated from, from our body. They affect the systemic circulation of thyroid hormones. They're affecting the bioavailability and metabolism of thyroid drugs, such as levothyroxine, and they may impact the metabolism and absorption of iodine, iron, selenium, and zinc, which, as I'm going to show you, could impact the function of our thyroid or is associated with levels of uh, antibodies in our body. So that will be an indirect mechanism in terms of interfering with absorption of some of those essential nutrients. 